Hello everyone, welcome to this lesson. So in this lesson, we're going to go through the Python code for the Romberg integration. Now, before I go into the code, let's actually recap what is the Romberg integration. So the Romberg integration uses trapezoidal approximations and combines them in a very special way to get a better approximation. And we can see that we're going to see in this lesson how, how effective this technique is. In this case, we have seen uh, the version of combining two with one and four with two. And we also mentioned that the criteria of using the Romberg is that one approximation has to have half of the step size of the other, meaning here is two compared to one and four compared to two, and also it's gonna be eight compared uh, to four and also 16 compared to eight and so on. And we have solidified this entire technique in this very simple equation. And we have also explained that this equation is actually a matrix and we've uh, seen uh, its illustration in matrix form. And here we can see a four by four matrix and we have uh, showing four levels of integration. The first level of integration is basically the trapezoids and also the second level of integration is using this, te this technique and basically a uh, third level is basically combining the second level and a fourth level is combining the approximations from the third level. So uh, let's begin with the code. So the first thing that we're going to do with the code in this lesson I'm using a different um, function, a uh, function e to the x and we're going to be using a lambda expression to uh, define the function. So it's lambda x colon math dot exp uh, of x and here I have imported the math uh, package to retrieve that exponential function. Uh, also, we're going to be defining the integration limits. In this case, I'm approximating between 0 and 1. Now, if you see, this entire technique is actually dependent upon the trapezoidal uh, rule. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be actually creating a trapezoidal function, which, which is going to be very simple using the DEF keyword and I'm gonna be calling this function trap, and also it's going to be defined in terms of n, which is the number of trapezoids, and also the upper and the lower limit, and it's going to be retrieving this function that we have defined up here. If you remember from the trapezoidal uh, lesson, um, the first thing that you're gonna be doing is going to be defining the number of segments, which is basically calculating h, then you're going to be uh, calculating the sum term and we're going to be combining the sum term and the h using the trapezoidal rule which is h divided by 2 multiplied by the function value at the lower limit plus the sum that we calculated here plus the function value at the upper limit and we're going to end the function by saying return uh, trap which is basically whatever has been calculated here is going to be returned by the function now before we go through the actual code let's actually uh, define uh, a few uh, initial values. So since this entire technique is based on this function and or um, this equation, and this equation is actually a matrix, we're going to be creating a matrix. So we're gonna call this matrix I, and we're going to be uh, using the package NumPy. So I've imported NumPy uh, as NP, and I have called the zeros matrix from there. So NP dot zeros, 10 by 10. So this is creates a 10 by 10 matrix and you can see uh, this correlates with how many applications you can actually store within the matrix. So here I have a 4 by 4 matrix which means I can go as far as storing 4 applications. So a 10 by 10 uh, can store uh, 10 different applications but you will never need that many space because this technique is actually very effective at converging to the value very quickly. Uh, much like with the previous lessons, we're going to be initializing the EA at 100. Uh, we're going to be starting with a one trapezoid, as you see up here. We start with approximation of one trapezoid, so n is equal to 1. And also i is equal to 1. i in this case is the number of applications. So of course we're going to be starting from one application to application and so on. So before I go into the actual main loop, we're going to be calculating the first um, um, estimate which is I11 which basically uses one trapezoid and I'm going to be calling the function trap and also I have defined n here as 1 and a and b are defined here as 0 and 1 so this function is going to be getting the area of this function here using one uh, trapezoid. So now that I have created these initializations let's actually go to the main code. 
So the main code is still a while function because we are trying to get an approximation with a certain level of tolerable error. In this case, we're going to be dealing with a few examples of error. Uh, we'll start with say 0.01%. So that's actually it goes through. Given that I have I11, so if I have I11, for me to go through the first, uh, to get a second level of integration, which is I12, I need to be calculating I21. Uh, so you're gonna find that the loop, what the loop does, at least for the first loop, uh, we need to calculate I21 and combine I21 with I11 to get I12. So let's see how this is gonna work. So the first thing that I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be recalculating N. So basically increase the number of trapezoids. And if you see the trapezoids actually increase from one, two, four, eight, which is basically all powers of two. So the first I, since I here is defined as one, so N is going to be equal to two. And then we're going to be getting the next integral approximation. And since I is one, so this is gonna be I two one. And and here is two, so it's gonna get us an approximation of the area using two trapezoids. So now I have I11 here, and now I have I21 here. So let's actually go through the actual main uh, rhomberg integration loop. So the loop is defined in terms of K, which is the level of integration, and the range is going to, so the level of integration starts from two and is going to end at I plus two. So given that I here is one, so basically one plus two is three, and we know from the range function, the last term is not included, which means this range is basically from two to two, and that tells you that this is only gonna loop once. Um, so given that K is equal to two, let's actually see what J is gonna be equal to. So J is gonna be defined in this equation here. So J is equal to two plus one, so that's three, three minus uh, two, so J is gonna be equal to one. So this equation here is actually identical to the equation that we have defined here. You're gonna find that i j plus one, k minus one. You're gonna find this j plus one, k minus one. And also here, i j, k minus one. So um, i j, k minus one. So basically I have taken the function up there and I just laid it out here in code. And I have defined j in this manner and the loop is defined in terms of k. So let's actually see. So if I have I11 and I now I have calculated I21, this code should get me I12. So in fact, J is one, K is two. So here you're gonna find that when J is one, this is gonna be I2. And here when K is two, this is gonna be one. So we're taking the integral I21 and in this case, I11 as well. So we're taking I21 here and I11 to combine them to get I12. And given that I have the new approximate, from before I go to the next uh, approximation, I need to calculate the approximate error to see whether or not I actually uh, gotten the error uh, or gotten the level of approximation I'm interested in. So in this case, the what's special about the Romberg is we're going to be calculating the error using the most accurate that we have at this point, which is the I12, compared to the most accurate after it, which is the I21. So if we go into the EA code, we're gonna find it's I1, and since I is one, so it's basically I12, and this is I21 divided by I12. And this also true error since um, I have the true value for this function, which is 1.71828. Uh, I'm gonna compare it with the I12, and we're also gonna get the, what is the true error. Now, of course, before we go to the next loop, uh, we up the I by one, or basically going to the second application of the Romberg if we didn't reach the approximate error that we are interested in. So in the first loop, we find that we have actually calculated the I21, combine it with the I11 to get the I12. So that actually goes through one more loop for the Romberg. So before I actually explain the loop in the code, let's actually predict what's gonna happen in uh, the code. So you can see that I already have the I11, I already have the I21 stored in the matrix. So what I need to do is I need to calculate the I31 and also calculate the I22 and then uh, calculate the I13. 
So the code, the next loop, we should predict that we're going to be calculating three integration estimates. So let's actually see how this is going to work. So in this case, i is going to be 2. So 2 to the power of 2, so that n is equal to uh, 4. So here, uh, i is 2, so that's going to be i3, 1. And this is going to be n is 4, so we're going to be getting the estimate with four trapezoids. So now at this point, we have gotten i3, 1. So the next uh, step is getting the i2, 2. So uh, here we have k is in range 2, and here i is 2, so 2 to 4. And again, the last term here is not included, so basically 2 to 3. Um, so basically we're going to loop for k equal 2 and k equal 3. So when k is equal to 2, here we have j is equal to 2 plus uh, 2. So now we have 4, uh, 4 minus 2, so we have 2. So basically j is 2 and k is 2, and you can see i2, 2, two. and this is going to be uh, using i, and here j is 2, so basically 3 and 1, and of course you can see it's going to be combining 3 and 1 and 2 and 1 to get i2, 2, two. so the first loop of the Romberg here is going to get us i2, two, 2, and we can predict that the second loop here, which is where k is equal to 3, is should get us the i13. So let's see if this is going to work uh, like that. So when k is equal to 3, j is equal to, so we have 2 plus uh, 2, so that's 4, 4 minus 3, that's going to be 1. So now we have i1 and k is 3, so i13, and this is going to be uh, calculating the i13 for us. So at this point, the most accurate that we have is the I13, and now we also need to compare it with the most accurate after that, which is the I22, which if we go into with the code for the EA, this is exactly what we're going to be seeing. It's I1, and since two, uh, I is 2, so it's going to be I13 compared to I22, divided by I13. And the same thing will happen uh, with, as with these uh, previous loop. We're going to up the application by one, going to a third application. I'm not going to go through exactly what's going to happen in the third loop because you kind of get the idea now. But we can see what we can predict that will be calculated in that loop. We're going to be calculating I41, and then we're going to be calculating I32, then we're going to be calculating I23, then finally we're going to be calculating I14. So it's a pretty involved technique, but you can also see that it's also a very simple technique. Um, and as you're going to see in just a second, it's a very, very effective technique. So let's actually start with getting a uh, estimate with an error below 0.1% and see how many applications that will take. So if I run the code here, it took two different applications. Uh, we in fact went below 0.1% at 0 0.002104 and we have a area of 1.718283 and this is compared to the true value which is 1.718228 um, it's almost identical um, to the estimate so you can see that in only two applications we almost have a estimate that is as good as the true value so let's actually go to another error. Since it's already below 0 0.01, let's actually go to 0 0.001, how many applications that will take. So if I run this, so it took three different applications, and I almost have neglectable, actually, approximate error. We have a true error at 0 0.0001. So it's almost one, so it's almost basically the true value. So in just three applications, I have a value that is as good as the true value. And all I used was basically uh, the trapezoidal rule, which is dependent on an area of a trapezoid, and this uh, combination code of these dis different estimates. Um, so before I end this lesson, I do want to uh, uh, say something about this matrix. So this is a matrix of zeros. When it comes to Python, Python actually starts at uh, zero. So zero column and zero uh, row. And so in this case, um, the zero column and zero rows are empty. 
And the reason I did this is for the sake of simplicity and the sake of clarity. Because if we used uh, the Python and started at zero, zero, for, for example, uh, we're going to have to be changing uh, the format of this function. And for the sake of this lesson and for the sake of simplicity and clarity, um, I would rather have a matrix with empty first uh, row and first column than you know, add unnecessary complexity into uh, changing this function. So just uh, just keep in mind uh, that the first row and first column are empty, but it really doesn't make much difference um, into um, using this code. Uh, so that's it for this lesson, and I will see you in the next lesson.